Hello Bobcats! In this video we will be discussing the mole and mole conversions. So let's, uh, the mole can be written short as M-O-L, that's shorthand for mole. Now the mole is a standard international unit that allows us to measure amounts of substances. Standard international unit that allows allows us to measure amounts of substances now one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Well, I say particles, it could be anything. It could be any item or anything. But we're in chemistry and because this is such a huge number, we're really going to look at particles. Because the thing is, the number is so large, for example, if I were to take all of the uh, if I took rice particles or just rice grains of rice and think of those as particles, um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd rice grains would be enough to cover all of the land mass of the earth by 75 meters. That's close to 200 feet. So that's a lot. So these are big numbers, but we are dealing with very small particles. And so these particles that we're talking about, um, let's make sure we understand which ones we're going to spend most of our time with. I mean, a particle could be an electron, it could be a proton, but the ones that we want you to be aware of are ions, atoms, molecules, and formula units. Now remember, atoms are the smallest unit of an element. Molecules are the smallest unit of a covalent compound. And um, shorthand for molecules would be M-O-L-C dot. Now be careful, that looks like a mole, but that's really M-O-L-C, not M-O-L-E. And it's for covalent compounds, and then formula units are for ionic compounds. It's the smallest unit of an ionic compound. And shorthand for that would just be F dot U dot. Okay, so uh, one mole is equal to that number. Now, I want you to think of it as uh, the same way that you think of a dozen. If I say one dozen, you would automatically think 12. So I can have one dozen eggs, you think 12 eggs. If I had one dozen ping pong balls, you would say 12 ping pong balls. If I said you have one mole of ping pong balls, then you have 6.02 times 10 and 23rd ping pong balls. Um, so it's just like thinking of a dozen. It just tells you how much of that thing that you have. Now, there is a name for this number. So this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is known as Avogadro's number. And that's how I will refer to it when I'm talking about conversion. I'll say you need to use Avogadro's number to convert from moles to particles. Okay. So the best thing to do now, now that you got an idea of what a mole is, Let's do some conversions. And to do conversions, the best way is to just get started. So let me go ahead and rewrite. Um, it, we're, let's talk about it. We're going to do mole to particle conversions. Now, the conversion factor or the equality statement for this mole to particle conversion is going to be one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd 
times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, that's my inequality statement that I use to set up conversion factors. So let's take a problem. Let's say we want to know how many iron atoms, that's Fe, iron atoms are found in 1.15 moles of iron. Sorry, Fe, iron. Okay, so I want to know how many atoms of iron are in 1.15 moles. Now this is straightforward, it's very simple, but it's best to start with something simple. And here I'm going to draw a road map. In other words, how, where am I going to convert? So I've got moles, so I start out with moles. And I know that I can go from moles to particles. In this case, the particles are atoms. So I'm going to go from moles to atoms. That's my road map. And I'm going to need one conversion factor here. And that's going to be Avogadro's number as the conversion factor. So I'm going to start the problem now. You should all get used to or tr make a habit of always writing a question mark of what you're looking for. In this case, we want to know how many atoms of iron. And yes, it is important to include the, the uh, unit of measurement and the unit of substance. Because later we'll be changing not only units, but we'll be changing substances. And I want to know how many atoms of iron are in 1.15 mole of iron. Now in this case, I have the same substance, but I need to change moles to atoms. So in order to do that, I know that for one mole, I have this many atoms. Since moles are on top, I'm going to say one mole of iron on the bottom is equal to, or is uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. Okay, so now atoms is what I'm looking for, so I don't need to do any more steps. Now in this case, I'm going to just show you how to make sure you use the calculator correctly. Remember, you are not allowed to use any of these TI 84 plus or higher, 83 plus even, no graphing calculators. So if you bring one to the test, I will not let you use it you need to use these kind of calculators. Not this specific kind, um, this is one of the better ones, but one that doesn't have graphing capabilities. Now, so in this case, I'm going to walk you through it, make sure we do this correctly. So I have 1.15 times 6.022 EE23. So that, that means 6.22 times 10 to the 23rd. See how that shows up there? And when I hit equal, that's going to be 6.9, and I only want three significant figures, remember there's three here, so it's 6.93 times 10 to the 23. So I have 6.93 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. I ran out of space, so I put it down there. So that's how many atoms of iron are in that many moles of iron. Okay. I'm going to do one more thing. I usually don't do this, or I will not do this after this one practice, but I'm going to show you that this is not always written as the big number on top and the small number on bottom. It all depends on what you start with. So I'm going to just do another practice problem here to explain this. So what if I have a question like how many moles of sodium chloride contain 1.26 times 10 to the 24th formula units of sodium chloride. Okay, 
So in this case, what we're looking at is I want to go from, uh, I'm starting out with formula units, so which is the particle, formula units, and I'm going from formula units to moles. And so my conversion factor here is this up here, an equality statement. And so it's going to be the formula units to moles. So again, get used to writing what you're looking for. So in this case, I want to know how many moles of sodium chloride are in 1.26 times 10 to the 24th formula units of sodium chloride. Now remember, I've got the, the formula units or particles on top, so I want the formula units on bottom, and we know that there's this many formula units in one mole. So I'm gonna go 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium chloride will be one mole of sodium chloride. So when I have that many formula units, I have one mole. And I don't have any space over here, so I'm just gonna go down. I keep my uh, equal signs lined up. And so it's this divided by this, I get 2.09 moles, because it's moles is what I'm looking for, of sodium chloride. Okay, so that's uh, part of moles to particle conversion or vice versa. Now, sometimes though, I may want to just know how many um, atoms of sodium are in so many moles of sodium chloride. So now let's look at how we do moles of atoms in a compound type conversion. So let's do that. So, let's go moles of atoms in a compound. So we're going to start out with a question, okay? And in this question, let's say I want to know um, how many moles of carbon so I'm just looking at carbon atoms carbon are in one mole of sucrose and the formula for sucrose is C 12 H 22 O11. So that's the formula. Now for me to be able to explain this, I'm going to use an if-then statement. So, and it'll help you understand. So here we go. You know that if one molecule, that's a molecule here, one molecule, if one molecule of sucrose, that's C12, H22O11 has 12 carbon atoms and I know that it's got 12 carbon atoms because that's what the subscript tells me. So in this molecule I have 12 carbon atoms. I have 22 hydrogen atoms And the subscript tells me I have 11 oxygen atoms. Now, if we know that one molecule divides up like that in atoms, then, and here's the, so it's if 
then we also know that one mole of sucrose, which is C12, H22O11, has, well, if it had, if one molecule had 12 carbons, then one mole has 12 moles of carbon and 22 moles of hydrogen and 11 moles of oxygen. Okay, so if we know that a molecule has 12 carbons atoms and 22 hydrogen atoms and 11 oxygen atoms, then we also know that one mole of this substance has 12 moles of carbon, 22 moles of ox hydrogen, and 20, 11 moles of, o of oxygen. I'm sorry, 22 moles of hydrogen and 11 moles of oxygen. So how do we use this? What, what is the value of this? So let's look at a question here. So let's say I wanted to know how many moles of chlorine are in 4.25 moles of carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so my conversion, what the conversion is going to look like, and let's do a, a road map first. We know that we're going to take, we start out with moles of carbon tetrachloride, so I have moles of CCl4, and I'm going to convert that to moles of Cl. So if you notice, I'm thinking of this as one substance, this is a compound, this is another substance, this is the element. And the only way I can convert from one type of substance to another type of substance is by through the mole or mole-mole ratio. And so, and it only can be done through the mole, not through mass, not through particles, you have to be in the mole. So I've got um, mole to mole, it's the same unit, but now I have different substances. And that's why it's important to include measurement and substance, because sometimes you have to convert substance. So let's solve this problem real quick. So if I have question mark, I want to have um, I want to know how many moles of chlorine Cl are in 4.25 moles of carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so I'm at the mole. I just need to go from carbon tetrachloride to chlorine. So if I have carbon tet on the top, I know that one mole of CCl4 contains four moles of chlorine because of the subscript here. And that's what I'm looking for. So when I multiply, I get 17.0 moles of chlorine. Okay, so let's just go a little bit further on this to make sure you understand this. Um, and it is important to be able to do this. Let's look at the problem here. Let me get a uh, different color. Let's say, uh, let's look at an example. Problem. Let's say we want to know how many sulfur atoms I just got to make sure my computer doesn't shut down. How many sulfur atoms are in 0 0.25 moles of iron 3 sulfide? Okay, 
Now let's look at what are my what is let's do a roadmap here and figure out what kind of steps I need to do to do this problem. Okay, so we know that we're starting out with moles moles of this substance F E two S three, which is iron three sulfide, and I'm already in the mole. So remember, to go to a different substance, and I have to go to sulfur. I only do that through the mole. So I'm going to convert moles of iron three sulfide to mole of sulfur, and then I can go from moles of sulfur to atoms of sulfur using Avogadro's number. Okay. So we're going to do two conversion factors, a mole to mole ratio and then Avogadro's number. One mole is 6.022 times, times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So uh, again, I've, you should um, make sure you practice writing what you're looking for and include all units, both the measurement and the substance because we're going to convert the substance this time and so I want to know how many atoms of sulfur are in 0 0.25 moles of Fe2S3 iron 3 sulfide. Now remember I gotta go from moles to atoms and I gotta go from this substance to this substance. Now the only way I can convert from one substance to another is through the mole and I'm already at the mole. So I'm going to do a mole to mole ratio. So I have for every one mole of iron to sulfide, and I put it on bottom because it's on top here, I have three moles of sulfur. Now that it cancels. Now that I'm at moles of sulfur, I can go from moles, now I'm at the same substance, sulfur here and sulfur here. But I gotta go from moles to atoms, and we're gonna use Avogadro's number to do that. So one mole of sulfur is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. And moles cancel. So when I multiply all of this out, I will get 4.5. Remember, two sig figs, because I only have two here. 4.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. And I should have a big number because I'm looking at atoms. If you only have 4.5 atoms and not times 10 to the 23rd, how do you get half of an atom? So it makes no sense. So make sure you are evaluating your answer. So now we still have to do conversions for moles. We got two more types of conversions to talk about. So I'm going to go through and do the next one, which is um, mole to mass conversions. Okay. So now we're looking at mole to mass conversions. Now for doing mole to mass we got to talk about molar mass. Now molar mass that term molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Sorry about that. Ran out of space. So molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. Now this is determined from the atomic mass on the periodic table. And let's talk through this real quick. So, 
let's look at um, an element from the periodic table. So if I take, uh, let's just look at aluminum. So here's my uh, block on the periodic table of aluminum. It's number 13. Um, the symbol is AL. And then we have 26.98. Now remember, this number down here is the atomic mass. Okay, and I said that we determine molar mass from atomic mass. Now, remember in chapter two, the one we just did, finished, um, we know that one atom of aluminum would equal 26.98, 26.98 atomic mass units. So if we're looking at a single atom, that's how many atomic mass units for a single atom. But we really don't do reactions with single atoms. We do large numbers of atoms. So we can also say that one mole of aluminum is equal to 26.98 grams of aluminum. Okay, and now this right here, moles is equal to grams, is our molar mass equality statement. Okay. Now, what's significant about this is this. If I asked you to go measure a mole of something, you wouldn't really know how to do that because we don't have any um, instruments that actually measures a mole. And you can't go count 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That would just be impossible. It's too big of a number. But we do know that if we have, if I asked you to measure one mole of aluminum, what you would do is you'd go to a balance and you'd measure out 26.98 grams of that aluminum and that 28, 26.98 grams of aluminum would be one mole of aluminum. And we also know that if we have one mole of aluminum, we have um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. So let me write that down real quick. We know that if we have, we know that um, 26.98 grams of aluminum would equal to one mole of aluminum, but we also know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. So the thing is, um, I know then if I have this mass of aluminum, I have this many atoms in that reaction. Or we can say it's one mole. So that's how we are able to relate and determine or actually measure out a mole of particles is by using the mass from the atomic mass on the periodic table. Now what if we have um, molar mass of compounds? See this is of an element. So let's talk about the molar mass of a compound. So let me, I'll we'll try, I may not be out of red yet, so let's see. Molar mass of a compound. So what is the molar mass of compounds? Okay, so let's take a compound like sodium phosphate. Na3PO4. And all you do is you take the number of atoms, so we have three sodiums, and then I look at the periodic table, and the periodic table for sodium says it's uh, 22.990. We're going to round everything to two decimal places. So it's 22.99 grams. But I'm not going to put the units in yet. We'll put the units in the, um, in the answer. Now, we also have one phosphorus. So that's one times the molar mass of phosphorus. So I go and phosphorus is 30.974. I'll round that to 30.97. And then I have four oxygen. So that's going to be plus 
four oxygens times its molar mass and it says 15.999 we'll round that up to 16.00 and so when I add all of this up it'll be 163.94 grams per mole Okay, so that is my molar mass of that compound. It's an equality statement that can be used as a conversion factor. We could say that one mole of sodium phosphate is equal to 163.94 grams of sodium phosphate. So one mole is equal to that many grams. It's a conversion factor. So let's do one practice problem with this, and then we're going to do our last conversion factor. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit longer because there was a lot of information that we had to cover, and it's best to co cover it all at once. So let's do a practice problem. Let's say I want to know how many moles of carbon dioxide, how many moles of carbon dioxide are in 281 grams of carbon dioxide. Now Right away, let's let's. I guess we need to figure out what our um, what we're looking at for the road the road map. We're starting out with grams, and I want to go to moles. So I'm thinking mass moles molar mass. I need molar mass to do this conversion. And remember, molar mass comes from the periodic table, the atomic mass from the periodic table. So again I'm thinking mass moles so mass think of the words mass to mole molar mass so I need to figure out the molar mass of carbon dioxide first that's the first thing I need to do so CO2 is 1 carbon times 12.01 plus there's two oxygens 2 times 16.00 that comes out to be 44.01 grams per mole. Now remember we're saying that that one mole of carbon dioxide is this mass. It's a conversion factor and I should probably write that down so that you can see that. This We write it like this. This is how we write it but what we really interpret it as as one mole of CO2 is equal to 44.0 one grams of CO2 and that's how I interpret it but it's grams per mole okay now let's solve the problem we want to know how many moles I want to know how many moles question mark moles of carbon dioxide is equal to 281 grams of carbon dioxide Now my uh, substance is the same so I don't have to worry about conversion of substance. But I do need to go from grams to moles. By the way, anytime you're not in the mole, always think I've got to go to the mole. I've got to convert to the mole. So in this case I'm going to use molar mass. So we know that this many grams, since I have grams on top, I'm going to write 44.01 grams on bottom and that we know that 44.01 grams is equal to one mole so I put one mole on top and so I cancel that and that's what I'm looking for moles of carbon dioxide so that's 281 divided by 44.01 and I want three significant figures so that's going to be 6.38 moles of carbon dioxide Okay, so this is molar mass. So we've talked about mole to particle conversion. 
which uses Avogadro's number, and then mole to mass conversion, which uses molar mass. And we determine molar mass from the atomic mass on the periodic table. The last type of conversion we're going to talk about is mole to volume of a gas conversion. Okay, so mole to volume of a gas. And let me get some paper here. And this is the last conversion. I know this is a long video this time, but this is the way it goes sometimes. So mole to volume of a gas conversion. Mole to volume of gas conversion. Now it's very, very important that you understand this is a gas. It can be it, you cannot do this with liquids or solids, only gases. So it's a mole to volume conversion, and it's very specific for gases only, okay? So make sure you understand it. Now the quality statement is that one mole of a gas is equal to 22.4 liters of that gas. So this is my equality statement or that can be used as a conversion factor from moles to volume. Now think of that. Moles to volume. Okay. But remember this is of a gas and by the way that means any gas it could be carbon dioxide it can be methane it can be oxygen it doesn't matter it applies to all gases and when I say at standard STP at standard temperature and pressure so what does standard temperature and pressure mean well, well I'll write that down in just a minute but this conversion factor has a name just like you have Avogadro's number is a conversion factor going to uh, particles then you have molar mass converting to mass. This is called molar volume. Okay, so I just use terms like molar mass and molar volume. And it's at STP. And again, let's write this down. It works for any gas and only gases. Works for any gas. Doesn't matter what gas. Now, what does STP stand for? So, STP, let me put it in a different color so you can see. Um, STP just means standard temperature and pressure. Now, gases, we're stating this because if I change the temperature or I change the pressure, then we change. Um, everything for a gas. So we got to hold it at a standard temperature and pressure to keep it at the 22.4 liters. Now that standard temperature and pressure is equal to or is 0 degrees Celsius at 1 atmosphere. So if I change any of that temperature and pressure then this value is no longer valid. But we're going to assume right now that it, it's valid because we're not going to talk about. We will talk about what happens when you change temperature and pressure when we go over gases in chapter 7 or 8 I can't remember exactly depending on what book you have so let's do one problem with this to see uh, what it what what it looks like okay so here's my problem my example problem we have I want to know how many liters oops l i liters sorry how many liters of methane gas and um, remember methane is ch4 meth is one carbon and then you have to have four hydrogens four bonds around it so that's methane gas how many liters of methane gas are in 0 0.325 moles of methane? Okay, 
So um, remember, let's do our road map. We start out with moles, so I'm going to go from moles, and I'm going to go from moles to liters. So, and I know I can do this because up here I have my equality so mole to liter. So I'm using this arrow is going to use this to make a conversion factor. Okay. So let's solve the problem. Now remember, get used to writing what you're looking for. I'm looking for question mark liters of methane. And I want to know how many liters are in 3.25 moles of methane. Now when I look at this, I notice that um, my uh, substance is still the same, but my measurement, I'm going from moles to liters. Now, I drew a very long line here, and I didn't need to do it that long. But since we have moles of methane on top, we know that one mole of methane, CH4, is 22.4 liters of methane. Okay. So when I hit the equal sign for that, because I don't need to do any more, and I multiply this times this, don't have to divide by one, we have 7.28 liters of methane in that many moles of methane. Now I have one more thing. We're going to make a chart that helps you remember all of this and helps you do, go through all of this. So this is the last part of this video. And in this chart, mole is central. You always, always, always have to go to the mole. If you do not know or, or you're kind of lost or don't know where to start, if you're somewhere, you always need to go to the mole. So mole is central. Now, let's say I want to go from moles to particles. So I'm going to put particles down here. And remember, particles are atoms, ions, molecules. So I'm going to go from moles to particles. And so there's a, I can convert either way, back and forth, between moles and particles. And to do that, I'm going to use this equality statement. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. I'm just going to write P-A-R-T. Now, that's my equality statement for that conversion. Okay, so I can set up conversion factors. And it has a name. And that name is Avogadro's number. Okay, so that's my conversion factor there. Now, um, also, I can convert from mass to moles, back and forth. So if I have mass, I want to go from mass to moles. I can convert back and forth between mass and moles. And what we use there is, well, we'd say one mole is equal to, well, I don't have a number. Remember, I'm going to put question mark here, grams. And the reason I'm putting a question mark is because, remember, we have to determine that mass from the periodic table. So you have to determine the mass from the periodic table. And that star, because I can't fit it up here, let's go down here. So remember, mass from periodic table. table. There we go. Sorry about that. Mass from periodic table. Now, remember, we have a name for this also. We call this molar mass. So this would be the molar mass conversion. Molar mass. And then we have one more conversion. So let's say I want to go to volume of a gas. So volume And then I'm going to write here, of gas, so it's volume, but of gas, it's very important that you understand that, at standard temperature and pressure. Okay. 
And so I can do that conversion back and forth between the mole and volume. And that conversion is one mole, one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. And so that's my conversion or equality statement to make conversion factors. And we have a name for that. And that one would be, since it's moles to volume, it's molar volume of a gas. Okay, so I can convert from one, one thing to another using this chart. And so let's say I start out with mass and I want to know how many particles. So I have to take my mass and go to the mole using molar mass as the conversion factor. And then I got to go from the mole to particles using Avogadro's number as my conversion factor. Or let's say I know the particles, I want to know the volume with so many particles of oxygen. So I take my particles and I go to the mole. Remember, you always go to the mole. Mole is central. If you don't know what to do and you're not at the mole, go to the mole. So particles to mole using Avogadro's number and then mole to volume of the gas using molar volume. So I can go all over this, but there's my chart on how to get from one um, type of measurement to another, either mass, volume of a gas, or particles by going through the mole. And then I have my conversion factors of molar mass, molar volume, and Avogadro's number. And yes, you have to memorize these numbers for the test, um, but you can't memorize this one because you have to use the periodic table to determine the mass. And that is all for this video on mole and mole conversions.